Welcome back to Isha Gaming. <laughs> the games that I plan on playing very soon. I am soon planning on taking a break from Rune Factory 5 and still in the hype, so to speak. I am halfway through already Kirby and the Forgotten Land. The newest Kirby game, this time in 3D. I initially thought that we could have full control of the camera in this one, but we can't. But I'm gonna give you my first impression either way. It is a Nintendo game 100% and by that I mean that you can absolutely feel that it is the Nintendo quality. <laughs> seal of quality. The Nintendo colors, the Nintendo-ness of the entire game. Now, thank you Nintendo for sending over the review copy of Kirby. Along with this little thing, which is a mouse mat. Mouse pad, I mean. We can have it there. <laughs> okay, so over to the game. My first impression with Kirby is that it is immensely cute. The first thing that pops up is the colorfulness, the charming 3D platformer that this is. But I also have to mention that it is not entirely a 3D platformer like I thought it was going to be. There is no camera control, the entire game is set up with linear levels. There is a world map though that you can fly around on and you progress your way up on this world map, unlocking the next level and the next level it is linear. Sometimes you get some bonus levels where you can get the stuff that you need to upgrade your abilities and there are a ton of abilities in this game. Personally I am not missing any ability. I feel like they are all well represented. Though I read on I think it was Twitter that a lot of the original abilities that Kirby is known for they are not in this game. I'm not feeling it, <laughs> not feeling that. I'm very happy with the abilities and upgrading the abilities makes them behave differently. So if you ask me, a lot of the abilities, they feel like several abilities <laughs> when you upgrade them. Now you have a little town that serves as a hub world or hub area, which I can so much appreciate. And as you play the game and progress the game, this little town is going to fill up with several other houses where you can do some other things. There is a little figurine machine in here, which makes it very easy to collect the collectibles in the game, which are the figurines. I'm soon done with the first set. So that is quite fun, collecting all of those. In this game, I can happily tell you that you can choose the difficulty. <laughs> Easy, hard, doing all of that. I am playing on normal, I think I do. <sighs> Look, I wasn't sure, actually, I, I don't remember. <laughs> In this Kirby game, you have the new ability, the big ability that everyone is talking about and making jokes about. <laughs> the mouthful ability, which means that he um, sucks which means that he sucks very big items like cars, machines, all sorts of big items which gives Kirby a more fun and different gameplay style to say it very lightly as you can see here and they work, I like them <laughs> They are changing up the game quite a lot and the levels feel very exciting when there's so many new and different abilities that you can delve into and uh, I am enjoying this now. The graphics? The graphics are Nintendo's uh, best uh, graphics basically. They are very very close to the Mario series and what we could expect from that. It's very much like Super Mario Odyssey in its graphical style and the quality of the graphics. It's looking very cute, very colorful and detailed. And I've experienced no frame drops and no performance issues because uh, that would be weird, wouldn't it? Uh, it's very good, performing good. But this is something that really struck me. I think, personally, I think the music in this game is especially good. Very addicting, very hummable. It very much gets stuck into your head. I'm gonna show you a tiny little piece of uh, what I mean. So in all ways, Kirby and the Forgotten Land feels like a Mario game with that same vibe and the same innovation and the fun factor that Nintendo is so unique in creating in their games. And all the wow factors that Super Mario is known for. 
can find that in this one. It's like the most clever puzzles. It's such a clever sort of game with the level designs and the things that you do to progress the game. And this is just a very Nintendo to do it like this, as only Nintendo does best, if you ask me. So in that way, this is a very charming 3D platformer. I could say that this is very similar to how the level designs and structures are found in Super Mario 3D World, which also had an overworld map where you entered levels and they were linear with collectibles inside of them. You collect these small little doodledies, which I call them. Oh. I need to say a rune factor. <laughs> I need to say my rune factor again. Yeah. Now I'm going to give you the truth with Kirby and the Forgotten Land so far. The truth is that this is very good for kids. I would definitely get this for any kid. That is of course not to say that adults cannot enjoy this. Of course they can. I am finding enjoyment in the game. I very much like that you can collect a lot of things because collectibles, I am a sucker for collectibles. I like that it is a hub world. I think definitely Kirby is going in the correct direction with this game design, level design, the ability to upgrade your abilities. It's no longer just that you get your ability and you drop it sometimes, you can actually upgrade abilities. Giving the game sort of an RPG feeling, which I'm very much into, and a good world map, all of these things are definitely building upon the game to make it more appealing to me, even more now than Kirby has ever been. I am an all-time Kirby fan. I have not played all the Kirby games because there are so many Kirby games out there. So many spin-offs also. But I'm gonna tell you that... Kirby and the Amazing Mirror was one game that I 100 percented when I was like 12, 13, 13 years, yeah. And Kirby has always had that charm. Also known for being very easy, but I, I kind of feel that they have fixed that sort of with having difficulty settings in this game. I feel like this is a Kirby game that is going so much in the correct direction and I would 100% recommend this to any kid. Now, if you are more looking for a challenge, I mean, you would have to consult with yourself if this, if this is something for you. <laughs> for you. What? Oh. I found a secret. <laughs> Secrets everywhere, I love that too. This is a mainline, super mainline Kirby game, finally. So many spin-offs. Um, happy to say that I like it. And I like collecting things. I'm having a fun time in Kirby and the Forgotten Lands. Thank you so much, Nintendo Bergsala, for sending this over to me. I'm definitely gonna play it more, because like I said, I'm only halfway, I feel like. Played it in Easter. And I do have a feeling that it has a decent amount of content. And I also predict that this is a title that is very replayable. People will replay this game several times, is my feeling. Now another game that I am planning on playing very soon, as this is a video where I talk about games that I want to play very soon. I have now on the top of my backlog list Persona Strikers, finally. <laughs> it's not called finally, but finally I'm going to play it. <laughs> so the thing with Persona Strikers is that I am very interested in this game. I have only just started it. It is a hack and slash game in the Persona universe, which is also the Shin Megami Tensei universe, as far as I know, with an interesting world setting. And I am somewhat a new fan of this universe since I played Shin Megami Tensei 5 which I talked about in this video, I think, link down below. And there's something about the graphics in this game, and I think, if you know me by now, I'm very fond of the Musou hack and slash gameplay, which I find addicting. It's something there that's very appealing to me. And I want you guys to tell me down below, and also over in my Discord server, what you think about this game, because I am new, I just got my eyes up for this game. It was on sale also on the Nintendo eShop. And I was like, yeah, I've been looking at this. <laughs> I've been seeing this. I remember Happy Console Gamer and wife played this. I think it was last year. And I was like, not interested at that time, but I've been interested in it later and then searching for it on YouTube. And then I saw the video and I was like, yeah, I've seen it before, but it didn't interest me back then. It has now suddenly interested me. 
which sometimes can happen with games. You know about it, but you don't care. And later you're like, hmm, yeah, maybe that. So Persona Strikers is just sitting there in my Switch, waiting to be used properly inspected. I will let you guys know what I think if I um, play it more. Now guys, some other games that I plan on delving more into, but I just never find the time or something. There's probably some sort of explanation in there. But you guys have talked about this game a tiny bit in the comment sections uh, occasionally. It's some months old now, it's not brand new anymore, but it's called Grow Song of Evertree, which is, if I remember correctly, by the developers that made Yonder, which was a game that I loved. And I have played now Grow Song of Evertree maybe five hours, gotten kind of the hang of things, gotten kind of into it, but it's not convincing me to say that it is addicting or anything like that. I basically am in the middle of my feelings towards the game. It's like, it's not a bad game, it's not a very good game. I'm just playing it it's like this is okay this is fun but the thing is i very much enjoy the graphics and the ability that you can fly around sort of thing which is the camera mode though i just call the camera mode flying around but it isn't but anyways then you can look really up close on all the 3d models which is really geeky but i enjoy doing that sometimes so i like the look of it and it is I don't want to say that it is a life simulator, but maybe that is the official genre of the game if I uh, look up on Wikipedia. Maybe it is. Anyways, you rid the world of some sort of bad stuff just like you did in Yonder, and you befriend monsters just like you did in Yonder, and you go around and you mine and you use your sight just like in Yonder. <laughs> So many things like Yonder. If you ever liked Yonder, you could check this game a tiny bit out. I am, in my opinion, on the game right now, just in the middle. It's like, it's a game. It's a game. But I'm planning on playing it a bit more so that it's no longer just a... It's a game. So that I get a proper opinion later on. I will also keep you updated on that. Now some other games that I am planning on playing, and this one I actually got as a review code, but I haven't had the time, sorry. <laughs> Maglam Lord, which was a game that I had never heard about, but then I saw it in the circles that I hang in on social media, and it looked cool, it looked good. So uh, I'll play that what? 10 minutes. I just started it because I often just start a game to kind of dip my toes into it, sorta. Uh, but I'm like, nah, I'm busy right now with Rune Factory 5 still. But it is now in my backlog and it has my attention. It's gonna be played. I thought I would mention it and show it off to you. And uh, same goes with this one. I wanna know what you think of this game down below. I read every comment. <laughs> Now guys, I have a few more games that I just put down in my notes here, and I actually wrote The Serpent Rogue looks interesting, but I don't remember it. Okay, I will put gameplay over this, where you can see in The Serpent Rogue. Apparently, I wrote in my notes that it looks interesting. I have my notebook up in my living room, and sometimes I'm like, I'm seeing something, and then I'm, you know, make sure that I remember to check that out further, you know, later. <clears throat> so there's that. Check that out. I know nothing. I also wrote Seven Pirates H. ID Factory slash Compile Heart question mark. It says question mark actually. So yeah, that is also a game. It's a game. I thought I would mention it because we share everything among us here on Isha Gaming, I guess. Now further down in my notes I have Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes, which I have talked about a few times already. Now 13 Sentinels! Oh, I got this on Discord today actually. Are you gonna play 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim? 
I want to say yes, but right now, no plans for that right now, anyway. But it's gonna happen because it. I have already seen that I am interested. It's very story heavy, I heard. It's uh, basically mostly for the story that you play it, which I, I can handle a game that is focused on story over gameplay. I can definitely do that. Now, this is definitely a game that I want to play very soon and I've had it in my wish list in my Switch for so long. I'm just waiting for a sale, I guess, which never happens. Sometimes some games just never comes on sale, which very much applies for this game, which is called Sniper Elite 4. When I'm finished with playing the games that I'm currently going through, which I prioritize, I will definitely just buy that because I know that I will love it. I loved Sniper Elite 3, which I played to death and then some and completed 100%. I'm so ready for that. Quick mentions at the end. I'm also looking forward to playing Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, which is a game that I know is very beautiful, very pretty, and maybe, just maybe, it will even be better than Tales of Arise, which just didn't do it for me. I'm not saying Tales of Arise was a terrible game. It was an okay game, but it didn't, you know, blow my mind. It did not blow my mind. It was just beautiful, but the gameplay was lacking something there. But uh, this is very similar from what I have seen. Gameplay and trailers and stuff. I will put some gameplay trailer over this so that you can see. But it is a heads up. This is a pretty game and have this game uh, on your lookout. We have Xenoblade Chronicles 3, of course, lol. <laughs> I wrote, of course, lol, in brackets. Also, we have Breath of the Wild 2, lol, also in brackets. And then I wrote Pokemon Violet slash Nexus, which I then drew over because it was like, it isn't Nexus. Because I have that wordplay from Scarlet Nexus, so I thought it was Violet and Nexus, but it is actually Scarlet. Isn't that confusing? Violet Scarlet, not Nexus. There's no Nexus in it. So that was uh, the games that I'm looking forward to. It's such a shame. A repeatedly asked question to me on Instagram, Discord and Twitter. Which games are you looking forward to, Isha? I hope I could uh, answer it somewhat. And I just told you what I'm planning to play and what I look forward to play, which are also coming out well. Let me just say there are a ton of games and it's a good time to be alive. <laughs> now I have a really quick unboxing like I like to include in my videos sometimes. Just a quick unboxing. They asked me which ball I wanted and I said that there's no other ball than the Ultra Ball. Oh, this is heavy. It's like a bowling ball in miniature. Here we have a little stand for it. <laughs> From Bergsala, my people. This is a very nice thing to display. It's very cute. Maybe I can have it somewhere. It's sort of filled here right now. I can definitely have it here. I don't think you can see this. Oh, there's so many things in the way. I have the Norwegian flag up just for one reason and that is that everyone is asking me where is your accent from are you russian where are you from i love your accent where are you from where are you from the <laughs> norwegian there we have it thank you so much and uh, please join my discord down below and check out this Disc podcast and let me know what you think about the upcoming games and kirby the forgotten land not lands Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.